Nigeria and I'm still taking information from home all the way from Plateau State Nigeria and today I have a legendary with me I'm so privileged I'm so honored to be in the position to interview this legend when I say this legend I mean that I have known his music for like when I was very little, you know, when we don't know anything, we just with the diapers. Okay, during that time, there's no diapers. We just have some rappers wrap around our buttocks and all that. So you can imagine being a little girl listening to his music, insp inspiring people. And now I have him with me on this program. You guys have, you don't have the idea how excited I feel about this. Now today, unlike other topic we've been discussing about mindset we are looking into culture as you can see the environment it feels it feels natural so are you an african are you actually depicting your culture please stay tuned as i introduce i call him my legend i don't know about you but i call him my legend and i call him dantala but Let's hear from him to know more about his name and what he does. I bet you after this segment, you will know that culture is our heritage and we have to take, take, we have to take it as important as we take our secular music and every other aspect of life. So thank you so much, sir. I'm so happy to have you on this program. Mm. As I know, uh, Possibilities with Esther is a motivational program. And I am so honored to have you on this platform, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Dantala Jatu Dewan. And when I say Dantala Jatu Dewan, Jatu, sometimes people misspell it and write Jatau. Because Jato oh, is Jato. a bit more popular, oh. and so they always miswrite it and write Jato, but it's Jatu, J-A-T-U. Yeah. Several times I will write J-A-T-U and I will see it coming back in Jato. Yes. So Tantala Jatu, the one is my name. I was born in Kanke, local government of uh, Plateau State. Mm. I was born in 1961. Mm. By today I'm 59 years old. Oh wow! And uh, uh, at the age of uh, possibly, I cannot precisely say the date and time, but I was born into a culture of Plateau, culture of the Ngas people, mm. and uh, especially the Ndendeng music. Ndendeng is an Ndeng. instrument, yes. Okay, okay. Ndendeng is an instrument around the Plateau and some other parts of Kaduna, Adamawa, Taraba, and some other states in the north. Hmm. And then then is made of raft zeta, raft grass. Raft grass. Raft grass. And uh, when it is formed into Ndendeng, it is now called Molo in Hausa, hmm. but Ndendeng hmm. in Gas. Hmm. Uh, it is made of about 21 stalks of the raft grass. Hmm. But then uh, divided into three groups of five hmm. to give five sounds of the African music, which is pentatonic sound, hmm. five sounds. So as far as Ndendeng is concerned, is the standard music of Africans, and yeah. especially Plateau people and Nigerians. Yes, ma'am. So Ndendeng is what inspired me when I was small. And uh, I was really inspired because my mother mm -hmm. was a very good singer she's still alive but mm -hmm. she sings a very good song and uh, you know in those days when it is 4 a.m 5 a.m all the women will wake up mm -hmm. and uh, go to grind millet or uh, any corn on the native grinding mm -hmm. stones yeah, and uh, in our traditional no, uh, traditional way, there used to be three women. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one will do the first grinding, which is rough. Yeah. The second will do the second grinding, which is semi-smooth. Then the third person will do the third grinding, grinding. which is the smooth one. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you will prefer the rough mm -hmm. or the semi-rough or semi-smooth or, or the smooth. 
So mm. uh, they are in three categories. But at that time of 4 or 5 a.m., my mother will start grinding and uh, she will wake up her daughters who will support her in mm. grinding either the second or the first or the third, mm -hmm. whoever goes to do which. And so they will be grinding and mm. my mother will be doing the singing at that time. So around four, I will wake up, around sometimes three, and start listening mm. to my mother who will be grinding. Yeah. And when I wake up and she's grinding, I will not sleep again. She will be singing from that time till they finish uh, the grinding. And I keep listening to her mm. lyrics, her wordings, very inspiring and telling me or telling us of the things that are happening around the environment. Mm. Sometimes, you know, as in those days, they will marry many wives. Yeah. And when they are grinding now, she will be singing about situations surrounding the family mm -hmm. or the community or the entire land. Yes. And uh, I will use that to know the things that are happening within the community. Yes, sir. And I say, oh, I can use that to even talk about a larger society. society. If I become a good singer, then mm -hmm. I started uh, learning from my father too because he is a man and uh, when they are doing the, the, the songs of men, mm -hmm. he's very prominent there too. He's a very strong dancer and a singer. Mm. And uh, when he's singing, people will come around uh, to be listening to his own voice among other voices. Yes. And uh, sometimes they will come and tell you, oh, I listen to your father singing very powerfully and I feel very happy. Mm. My mother, again, people were always coming around with their radios, the stereotype of them to record her, to record her voice. Oh. And sometimes she wouldn't want them to record her voice because <laughs> she will be saying, my voice will finish. <laughs> I keep hearing my voice from every <laughs> radio. <laughs> Stop that. I will tell her that no, it will not finish. You say no. <laughs> How can I be hearing my voice in many places and you tell me it will not finish? <laughs> my voice will soon finish. Or don't, <laughs> don't record <laughs> again. Sorry to ask you this question. <laughs> I can see you have some um, like instrument. Yeah. instrument. Did she have, uh, she also had it or you you the inspiration of singing from her you got it and yes her did instrument, you just bring out your instrument or is from her her own instrument is uh, the the sound of the stones that oh, they are grinding that's interesting uh, that gives her the melody yeah. and uh, she sings according to the rhythm yeah. of the movement of the stone up and down and the ones that are coming from her daughters yeah. there's melody in the rhythm and she, her voice complements such a uh, 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 sounds that are coming from their grindings yes, yes. and so she has good music like that and people mm. sometimes come and hide and record her I even record when her. she's grinding at, at yeah. what age at what age did you pick up your music well uh, as i said since the time i was with my mother when i was i cannot Very young. i cannot really say mm. but uh, maybe from seven the age of seven yeah. uh -huh started listening to her and consciously knowing that uh, my mother was doing something. So I, I, I listened to her consciously hmm. uh, to learn uh, from her. Uh, then uh, the molo that I talk about, as a small child, I was not able to buy one for myself. Hmm. But uh, there were people who were already doing it and they were very popular with molo mm -hmm. and they sing around with it. So. Sometimes if you are just passing with your molo and singing, mm. I'll be following you from the back, yeah. listening to how you play it until when you go too far from the house, I run back home. Yeah. Then when I finished my primary school, by the grace of God, I was very good in my class. I was number one, first position in my class. Mm. And that gave me uh, the opportunity to be employed as a primary school teacher, they call it auxiliary teacher, sometimes they say mm. prop teacher. Mm. So that gave me an opportunity. I finished the primary school in 1976. So they said I should go to teach, but some were saying he is too small. He cannot reach the blackboard to write. <laughs> he cannot reach the blackboard to write. Yeah. Then there was this argument that uh, what about those that are tall and big enough to reach the blackboard and they don't have anything to offer? And if this one is small and even if he cannot get the blackboard and he is talking, they, mm -hmm. they will learn from him more than reaching the blackboard and writing nonsense. Yes. So mm -hmm. they won. Mm -hmm. 
and so mm. I was asked to go and teach. Yes. So in our class, first, second, third positions were asked to teach, mm. and I was lucky to be first position, mm. and I was given a school to teach. And it was through then mm. that I was able to get uh, money mm. to buy my first ndende, which is the molo, the and then I wrote and sang my first song in 1976, and that song has not been released up to today. But I know the song. 1976. Uh, my first song is still in me. Uh, but I sang it about uh, Adam and Eve. Oh, I, I think yes. at, at the end of <laughs> at the end of this interview, we yeah. love to hear that song. Oh. Uh, my question is this: uh, mm. in music, as yeah. you can see, we have youth who have started doing something from the culture. Yes. Uh, you know, but at a point in time, because of the system, when I say the system, I mean the entertainment industry do not really accept them. Yes. How were you able to keep up to this your way of music till now? Okay, let me tell you something. Really, I had that problem too. Mm -hmm. Because I look at the society and saw that so many young men, very good looking young men, mm -hmm. going into music that they say is contemporary music. Yeah. Contemporary, some were doing reggae music some doing country music, some doing other forms of music, and especially reggae was the one that was dominating at the time I was mm. coming up. But when I look at the reggae musicians, they come in tattered jeans, very yeah. dirty jeans, mm -hmm. in dreadlocks, very dirty dreadlocks, and they will eat food and uh, rub their hands on their head and on their jeans. Mm -hmm. And I will see girls following them like that. And I say, Kai, is this our culture? And sometimes not only in tattered jeans and dirty uh, uh, dreadlocks, mm -hmm. but then uh, they were taking some other smokes that I don't know their names, they say marijuana or whatever names they gave them. And uh, the ladies were still following them. I said, Kai, is this our culture? It's not. How can our youths be going this way? And is that how to promote our culture? Mm. But then I was left to say, Kai, let there be somebody that will promote our culture yes. so that it's not that I didn't like reggae, I like reggae music. And when I started my music, they were calling me Gas Reggae King. Mm -hmm. Because I saw that that was what was in vogue at that time. And if I was going to do anything different from reggae, it was not going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. So I started following reggae rhythm, reggae tunes, and mixing it up with uh, Ndende mm -hmm. music so that I will not yeah. be rejected. Yeah, yeah. So I started playing the Ndende like reggae songs mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, the, the youth we are going to like it, but like it in a different, in a different dimension. Way, yeah. So I started playing the molo, and uh, in those days, if you come with your local music, nobody has the time for you. But because I fuse modern musical instruments into it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and gradually that gained acceptance by my everybody, community, yeah. and everybody that was listening to it saw a new thing. Mm. And even pastors, men of God, yeah. will attend gala night at Puzdung, will attend the Puzdung proper because they felt that Antala has brought in a new hmm. uh, gen of music. Yeah. And they will say, we come to watch you because Antala has introduced a new style of music and it was accepted. So most of the modern musicians that were coming to our land were not accepted. They hmm. brought in any reggae musician, any kind of music musician that was there at that time, Antala was still going to give better music hmm. and they will go back and imagine who is this Antalan? what is he doing that people prefer him than most of the things we do, we do yeah. and hmm. they gave me names maybe he is this or that uh, juju but i'm telling you between god and man is only yeah, juju. i cannot go <laughs> not this is just natural talent that god yeah, has given me talent. and you know when god has given you something people will give you names yeah and i always keep praying for them that uh, god should give them long life that someday yes, they will discover that i am naturally gifted by god and by the grace of god everybody is beginning to know that this is talent this, mm, is, gift. this is gift that is why today you are even calling me yes. legend yes. a legend and truly that is how the music started with me mm -hmm. and as i was growing now mm. went to federal college of education okay i wanted to ask questions yes, sorry okay. to cut you short sorry. Right. uh in terms of your cultural this uh, this uh, cultural music your kind of music do you have another occupation that you you are into it since this one i think is more of a passion was there a child in you that wanted to be someone like a doctor an accountant 
while you're doing mm -hmm. this. I'm curious yeah, to know that. That's true. Yes, sir. When I was growing up mm -hmm. in primary school, I did not think anything at all about being a musician. Mm -hmm. That was nothing close to me. I was completely too shy, so timid, so shy that when my mother heard that I was singing, she was very surprised that oh. if somebody could sing among her children, mm. it's not Dantala. <laughs> it could have been other brothers of mine yeah. who were more uh, lively, more... Uh, uh, Outspoken. Uh, yes, in fact, yeah. extroverted yeah. than myself. I was completely an introvert, mm -hmm. too shy. And uh, so, all that I was thinking in primary school, was that uh, I wanted to become something above the sky, maybe a pilot, yeah. anything, astronomy. But if I were not going to be anything like that, mm -hmm. let me be something beyond the ground, under the, the sea. Yeah. Uh, but as I was growing up, I saw that uh, then 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 is always drifting me mm. away from all this, and I started representing my school even in primary school, mm. up to secondary school, until I went to f uh, Federal College of Education, Pangshin, where the things I was doing were noticed by my school, and especially during our rack day, I generated the biggest amount because I created one puppet that was mm. manipulated and it was dancing in the air. Uh, I know that. That was one of the, uh, <laughs> that was one of the things that. that gave people yeah, another surprise about me. Yeah. Yeah, well. kind of, you kind of and by the grace of God, it gave me the ability to do acrobatics, uh, these body contortions that I could carry my legs and put on the neck and do some groundworks. Mm. And all of these things were making people to get surprised. Mm. And Tala can do all these things. And uh, anytime I'm out on stage, you see the number of people rushing, rushing to, to come. And that was how people began to invite me for shows there. Mm. And when I finished from the FC Pension, I finished, went home to the village. And they were looking for me all around that I was to go and collect the biggest award from FCE Pension. I was very surprised, but I didn't know that I was noticed yes, until I was given that big uh, award. Mm. And they invited Governor Lawrence Onoja, yeah. who was the then governor of Plateau mm. State, who came and he gave me the award, the, the last award that was given. And uh, he said a lot of things about me through the citation. And uh, I became as if the, I was going to be the governor of Plateau State. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, every student <laughs> was saying, oh, yeah. don't forget us in your kingdom. Oh. Yes. And that was how it started. Oh, so I was yeah. not really doing anything. Mm. I was trained as a teacher as a to teacher. become a teacher, but now changed to, to the, uh, the, oh, this. Okay. Uh, and that was how I was employed. The governor gave me automatic, mm -hmm. that they should go and give me automatic employment. employment. And by employment, you hear that? Automatic, mm, employment. automatic employment. Yeah. So I did not look for work. Mm -hmm. This then, then gave me what uh, job in government thank you very much uh, i hope you've not gone anywhere you're still here with us learning about our culture you are, if you think the kind of music you're doing is not being accepted in your environment or is not connecting into the society you are right in i think it comes with passion you need to look at the reason why you started doing it. Mm. But before we go into deep into it, you know the second part of possibilities with Esther is to know about our guest mindset. Now stay tuned as we go on our commercial break. We'll be right back. again to possibilities with Esther on the second segment I'm here with a legend I call him Baba Dentala Jato a legendary and we have been talking about how we can appreciate our culture how he started his own music journey and where he is right now but you know the part we are most interested in is his mindset because they said if you want to go somewhere far you have to go and dig into other people's mindset those people who have gone through experiences those who, who have achieved a lot you pick it from them you take out from their own experiences edit it and be able to apply it in your own life so sir, thank you very much this is the second segment of mm. our program okay. and i will 
because following through your profile i have seen you you are not just in plateau state you're not just in nigeria you have gone internationally i have i, I think you went to rwanda or i saw other african countries yeah. now i'm coming from turkey and natural tv mm. is the only african television that operates in turkey and aside from that it has only in Africa over 42 African countries. Now, all these African countries, they are watching you. They are seeing, they, looking at you, they can see culture, appreciation of culture. I'm sure some people have even forgotten what their culture looks like. Yeah. Like for me, I, I went to Turkey. I don't know, I'm so ashamed to say I don't know how to speak my tribe. But I heard you speaking it. And being in Turkey for a while, now I can speak a foreign language. Yeah. But yet, I can't comfortably, fluently speak my own dialect. So what can you say about this in terms of encouraging our, our kids from parents, passing this culture into them? They said, you can leave Nigeria, but Nigeria will not live out of you. Yeah. So if you leave Africa, Africa shouldn't supposed to live out of you. What is your advice on that? Yes, um, Africans and their language, mother tongue. Mm. I think we have a big problem. Uh, our people, because of religion, because of education, Western education, have abandoned their mother tongues. And some after graduating from university they feel they are too big and uh, they look at uh, their tribe as inferior and so they feel ashamed to speak their language sometimes you see father and mother are of the same tribe but their children cannot speak uh, their language sometimes you go to school and you say you speak vernacular they beat you they say you must speak english, english. and children cannot say come or go Mm. in their language they cannot say good morning in their language and those are some of the things that i feel too bad about that uh, as africans god has a reason for giving us our languages the god did not make any mistake at all mm. and uh, if those tribes go extinct i am sure god is going to query us mm. ask us what did you do to your language Sure. Nobody is allowed to kill anything, mm -hmm. including your language. Mm -hmm. Then how can you be responsible for killing your language? Mm. And that is why yeah. some of us are going to be responsible. I mean, yeah. to answer for why our children mm -hmm. cannot speak our languages. Speak our why should they be ashamed of our languages? Mm -hmm. Because the religion look at culture as fetish, and so they feel that nobody should... If I go to the church now with my traditional musical church, instruments, they yes. will be looking at me as, <laughs> and this one can come and take Holy Communion. Uh, when but if I go, when you dress like this, <laughs> I'm like, no, this is not it right is at not all. Yeah. So if you carry a guitar and hang on your neck, or carry your okay. keyboard now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, music. you see how? That is how it's affecting us. And I feel that those things are not correct at all. Mm -hmm. And that is why I say, if somebody can help promote, but who is that somebody? Yes. So I gave in myself mm. that uh, I will contribute my quarter to see that uh, our people feel the dignity of our uh, uh, languages. languages. And that is why I sing most of the songs in my language. Mm. So that if you are enjoying my music, mm. you may learn, learn something the music. From it. Mm. Yes. And that is how some of the boys from, uh, some of the children from my community, you can see them singing my songs, even if they cannot speak the language. Yeah. And by the time they are speaking, having the songs, memorizing the songs, they will be singing it. And when we meet, they ask me, what did you mean by this? Or they ask somebody mm -hmm. and the person will explain to them. And you know, that's a way of keeping the language, keeping alive. The language alive. Yes. And I think awesome. if we have so many uh, artists, mm -hmm. uh, the traditional musicians, mm -hmm. and you copy from me, you copy from somebody, you copy before you know it, you are already speaking the already language. Speaking that's the one language. of the ways that, uh, to promote uh, the language. So I feel that uh, uh, our younger ones mm -hmm. should uh, learn some of these instruments so that uh, the language can, can be promoted, promoted through the songs. Hmm. Singing native songs is one way of uh, 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 retaining the and keeping the language. Of our language. Yes. Thank you very much, yeah. sir. Thank you so much. Uh, a last word of encouragement for Natural TV. 
when I was told that Esther <laughs> is from Plato and from the Irregue extraction, yes, sir. I and that she's in Turkey. <laughs> I say, my daughter, my sister, my one mm -hmm. is in Turkey, and how mm -hmm. will Turkey? Then I feel this Turkey, I think, is a very good country to yes, accept sir. one of us there, yes, sir. and I feel that. Uh, if Nigerians could allow those from Turkey to come to Nigeria, yes, sir. Uh, that will be intermarriage of culture, mm -hmm. and uh, that will promote uh, unity, mm -hmm. and that will promote cultural uh, development and diversification too. Uh, I see that you are trying to represent Plateau yes. in Turkey very, very well. And uh, for Turkey to even allow you to do this, I mm -hmm. think they are very good people. They are. And I want to believe that, uh, uh, in fact, f I have read so much about Turkey in the Bible. Mm, and yeah. truly it has mm. given me inspiration that let me be, if, I'm, if I have the opportunity to be mm. in Turkey, to see and learn a lot of things about yes. Turkey. Mm -hmm. Turkey is one of the countries of the world that uh, 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 the world must mm -hmm. know about, about and uh, mm -hmm. for so many reasons mm -hmm. you have a lot to learn from, from Turkey. Mm -hmm. It's not the issue mm -hmm. of any religion, no. but uh, in fact, mm -hmm. talk about Adam, talk about God, talk mm -hmm. about whoever in the holy books. Even Abraham, the churches of Ephesus is there. Yes, Mary's you house see? is there. So, and yeah. so, I think that is the beginning of religion. Yes, sir. And so. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a place that I would want every African to visit, to visit. because you have a lot to learn there, yes. including myself. Yeah, if yeah, I have we'll the opportunity. The for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, All right. having you on my program is enough, yeah. enough yeah. reasons for me to find a way to see how we can bring our culture there yeah. and how they also bring their own culture. Yeah. Within, on, in this world, we are all one. Yes. Once again, thank you. I'm so honored to have you thank on you. this program, and hopefully, next time we're going to host you in yeah. Turkey. Yeah, here we come. Thank you. Okay, so we are coming to the end of this program. And as I always tell you all the time, please go on our YouTube channel, search for Possibilities with Esther, and get to watch our previous programs. Please send your messages what you think about this program. Has it inspired you? Write me a text message. Sorry, send me a WhatsApp. No calls, just WhatsApp on the numbers on your screen. Go on our social media and search. And if you want more information about our daddy here, please send me a message on WhatsApp and I will surely definitely connect you with him. Once again, I am Esther James from NTR and this is Possibilities with Esther. I'm out of Plato until I come back next time and see you again on the next segment. <laughs> Mana ante biro kere maya di Tumana mwe kwera Mana mwe kwera Mana kwa mzi mwe kwera Tumana mwe kwera Mana ante biro kere maya Mana ante biro kere maya the way I'm being rolled, getting Wasa ya kwa na inane, ya kwa na gindi manguru Wasa ya kwa na inane, ya kwa na gindi manguru Iyo farpa na muru, mantu walankani tira dundura Idan na mutu, kada kuyiku ka kwa na ya kariu the winner on your own. No man go, Mamma.
Plateau State is home of peace and tourism. Plateau State is home of peace and tourism. United we shall stand, divided we shall fall. Allah and the Muke Bauta Masa, they came we for Daba. Yes, who call Mohammed, the Suchemu ye for Daba. Bible Koko Ani, the Suchemu ye for Daba. Karadini, Karadini, a Samo Hauka. Karsiasa, Karsiasa, a Samo Hauka. Zenchen Kasa, Zenchen Yaksa, a Samo Hauka. Zenchen Kudi, Zenchen Kudi, a Samo Hauka. Zenchen Mata, Zenchen Mata, a Samo Hauka. Plateau State is home of peace and tourism. Plateau State is home of peace and tourism. United we shall stand, divided we shall fall. Yes. All right. Thank you so much.